Hey guys, welcome to Master Monday, Master of the Week. I'm your host, Pastor Emmy Lively Clanton, Senior Pastor of Salt Life Experience Church in Conyers, Georgia. Welcome back, guys. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'd invite you to go to my website, my personal website at www.emmylively.com to learn more about me. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a senior pastor and a church planter. I also have books on there. My uh, my new book, Lord Teach Me How to Pray, was well, not that new, but it's a, it's new maybe to you. And you can purchase that book as well on my website, okay? Other uh, e-courses I have and also my bios on there as well. So guys, if you also want to learn more about our visit us at www.saltlifeexperience.com. All right, I want to ask you to help us grow this channel to 375 for the month of October. I need your help. So first thing I need you to do is like this video subscribe to this channel and make sure that you share this video with a few people. Okay. But let's hop on into what you want to be able to focus on this week. That's what Master Mondays are all about. What do you need to do? What do you need to know so that you can dominate in your week and the week doesn't dominate you? Anybody ever been there? Okay, I've been there, <laughs> done that, bought the t-shirt. <laughs> okay, sometimes you are in a place in your life where you feel like life is just on top of you and you're trying to crawl out from under it. But how many of you know that as believers, we're called to be overcomers. We're called to be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And so God wants us to be walking on our week, not the week walking all over us, okay? And so that's a huge part of what uh, Master Mondays are all about. Mastering the Monday so that you can master the week, all right? I wanna to talk to you really just from my heart briefly is about getting back to the basics, you know, as uh, time goes on and, and we are getting, we're nearing the end of the Gregorian calendar. That's basically the Roman calendar, which is, uh, which is based off of the sun, which is a linear calendar. And um, it's from January to December. And so right now we're in the, in the month of October. We're in the last quarter on the Gregorian calendar. So we're getting ready to go out of that year um, uh, in that sense. However, according to the Hebraic calendar, which is God's calendar, it's based off of the lunar, uh, which is the moon, the lunar system, which is a circular calendar uh, that deals with seasons. And so technically, Rosh Hashanah, which means the Jewish New Year, the Hebraic New Year, just um, commenced in um, on September uh, uh, 18th or the 20th or so. And so we're already technically on the Hebrew uh, calendar. We're already in the new year. <laughs> so uh, maybe you've been feeling a jolt. Maybe you've been feeling something feel different. Um, you can't quite put your finger on it, but that's probably what it is. You're in a new year <laughs> on God's calendar. OK, but listen, whether you're uh, focusing, whether you're paying attention or participating in the uh, Hebraic New Year, which has already started, or you're waiting for the Gregorian calendars New Year, which is in January, that's about to start either way. Um, the, the same word applies. It's time for us to do a reset. Um, going back to um, the basics, go back this week and just with the Holy Spirit, go over um, your habits and look at where you need to do some maintenance, where you need to press the reset button um, and what you need to just maintain. Um, because many times as we're going throughout time, you know, sometimes we're doing good, we're going good. And um, other times we look up and it's like, wow, I've made a lot of progress, but there's some other areas that have begun to lag behind. And that is normal. So what you got to do is be able to do those internal checks and external checks and look and say, hey, what's going on here? Let me do some inspections. So let this week be a week of inspection where you go back with the Holy Spirit and you allow him to show you areas that you need to do a reset in, areas that you need to do maintenance in, and areas that you just need to main, uh, continue doing great things in. So I want to look at, uh, I want you to look at a couple of key areas right now, okay? I want you to go back and I want you to examine your prayer life this week. I want you to really look at um, how consistent have you been in your prayer life? Um are you uh, drifting away from that time that you used to set for your devotion daily? It was like a hardcore thing. It's going to happen at, you know, whatever the time was, you were like, it's going to happen. This is my time. I'm going to get my word. I'm going to get my soft music and I'm going to close up in my room or wherever it is with the Lord and spend time. And do you remember how you felt during that time? Do you remember how much stronger you felt, how much clear clarity you had, how much clearer you were? Do you remember how much more in tune with the Lord you felt? Um, and even with other people, you felt more in tune. So listen, if you have been um, going, 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 and you've been noticing, you know, distraction, you've been noticing 
I haven't been as consistent in my prayer life as I should be, then that is an area that you just need to go with the Holy Spirit and you need to uh, make a um, decision to get back on it, to reset in the area of your prayer life, you know, um, and it happens. Don't allow the, the spirit of condemnation to beat you upside the head. God is not condemning you, but he will convict you and remind you like, hey, come on, because the truth is, guys, is that if the enemy can get us out of prayer, he's he's won. Because our words are so powerful. Our prayer time is so powerful. It literally creates fire, fire all around us, fire around whatever it is we're, we're praying for. It could be a place. It could be a person. It could be a situation or a community. When we pray, things have to shift. And so one of the enemy's devices is to get us out of prayer by distractions, distracting us by time, uh, things taking our time, distracting us by our jobs, distracting us by our kids, distracting us by, um, you know, demands in our world to where we feel like, God, you can wait or God, you're going to have to wait until I finish this. But the big trick about it is, is that without um, uh, spending time with him, you're going to be going around in circles, which is actually, it's a shameless plug. <laughs> Years ago, I made a song called Circles. And it was really about God. It turned into an R&B song, but it was basically saying, Lord, it's like, I'm going in circles. I'm going in circles without you. And that is what our lives are like without prayer. We're literally going in circles, going through the motions. Nothing's really working. We're working in vain because we have not consulted with the God of the universe first. And we haven't been filling up our spirit, filling up our souls with the love of Jesus Christ. So it's really important that um, you don't fall for the bait. You don't fall for the enemy's devices of trying to distract you. Okay. And that's a word for me as well. So this week you want to examine, first of all, your prayer life. Second area you want to examine is... Um, a lot of us are saying, Hey, well, I don't know how much time I have. Time is always uh, a, a commodity that we're always running for. Right. Well, I want you this week to examine also, um, you know, your waking up schedule. Did you start out waking up earlier, an hour earlier, two hours earlier? That way you could spend time with God. That way you could make that healthy breakfast that you needed. That way you could go and exercise. But now you're finding yourself waking up later and later and later and you're rushing now and you don't have time to spend with God. Um, you don't have time to really do anything. And now as a result, your day or your week and now your month, it feels like it's on top of you versus you're on top of it. Well, my friends, one of the areas is we have to look at our time. We have to go back and look at, you know, how we are getting up in the morning. That area is an area that needs discipline. But the Bible talks about how Jesus would wake up very early in the morning to go spend time with the Lord. And uh, the book of Proverbs is full of scriptures that talk about rising early and the the benefit of doing so in, in our, not just in our spiritual lives with God, um, but also in our working lives with prosperity. You know, um, the Bible talks about a man who loves sleep you know, will soon find himself in ruin. And that's in the book of Proverbs. So it's really important that we examine, are we waking up on time or are we keep on hitting the snooze? Okay, maybe I'm just talking to myself here. But if that's the case, then go back and then make a plan with the Holy Spirit on getting disciplined in that area to start waking up earlier again so that you can have your time for, for devotion, you can work out, you can eat healthy, and you can be on top of your day and you're not rushing. Third area that you want to examine is also in your speech. Examine your speech. Really look around your life and say, what have I been saying lately? You know, you could have started out in faith and started out strong, but you look around and actually now, you know, you didn't realize it, but you've been cursing yourself. You look around and you didn't realize that you stopped even confessing scripture over your life. You know, look around your bathroom window, your bathroom mirrors and see, have I still been putting my scriptures up and confessing them every day like I used to? Have I still been getting my vision board out and, and, and looking at it daily and, and speaking those scriptures out or those affirmations out? Have I been using my words to really frame my world? And so I want to encourage all of us, if maybe you've taken a, um, a, a, a sabbatical or something from saying them unknowingly, an unconscious sabbatical, it's time to get back on the job, get back on the post and begin speaking the word of God intentionally over your life, over your situation, over your family, over your community, over whoever it is or whatever it is the Holy Spirit might be saying that you need to speak over. And I promise you, you will begin with these three things to begin seeing your entire life begin to fall back into place. You're going to begin riding on the wings 
of angels versus being drug under, <laughs> drug under the chariot, honey, the swing low sweet chariot. Some of us felt like we were barely holding on, dragging up under that chariot. No, God wants to set you back on top for the word of God teaches us in Deuteronomy 28, the, the blessings of the Lord. And he talks about us being the head and not the tail and that we would be lenders and not borrowers. Listen, God has a good plan for us to put us at the top, but we got to make sure that we are, our habits our habits that actually create our behavior is 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 a behavior and habits that are going to cause us to win in the spirit and in the natural. So guys, I love you. I pray that this word blesses you. Let's just do a fresh reset. Let this week be a week of resetting and recommitment to being the best Christian believers that we absolutely can be. And I promise you that the Lord is going to show up and show out in your life. Listen, I love you. Please share this video. Please like it. Subscribe to this channel. I love you. I'll see you guys next time. Okay. Good night.